It was supposed to be an ordinary evening. The city streets were quiet, illuminated by the dim glow of streetlights and the occasional passing car. In a small neighborhood bar, a black veteran in his late forties sat alone, sipping his drink. His face bore the lines of a man who had seen too much, scars, both physical and emotional, from his years in combat. Despite the hardships he had endured, he carried himself with quiet dignity, enjoying the peace of a calm night. Little did he know, this tranquility was about to be shattered in the most brutal way possible. Outside, a police cruiser slowly rolled past the bar. Inside, the officer on duty, a white man in his mid-thirties, glanced at the veteran through the window. His eyes lingered on him for a moment too long, suspicion creeping into his mind. The veteran hadn't done anything wrong, but for the cop, it didn't matter. There was something about his presence, his quiet confidence, that the officer didn't like. Maybe it was the veteran's appearance, his muscular build, the way he sat upright, radiating strength. The cop's prejudices began to swirl, feeding into his desire for control. As the veteran left the bar and stepped into the night air, he felt the cool breeze against his skin. It was a peaceful moment, one that he had come to appreciate after years of chaos in war zones. But as he walked toward his car, parked just down the street, the headlights of the police cruiser flickered on, and the vehicle slowly pulled up beside him. The cop rolled down his window, eyes scanning the veteran from head to toe. What are you doing out here this late? He asked, his voice sharp, already laced with accusation. The veteran paused, surprised by the confrontation, but maintaining his calm. Just heading home, he replied simply, his tone respectful. He wasn't looking for trouble, but the officer's demeanor suggested trouble was looking for him. The cop stepped out of the car, his hand hovering near his holster. His eyes, cold and calculating, stared into the veterans, searching for a reason to escalate the situation. For the cop, it wasn't about maintaining order. It was about asserting power. What should have been a routine moment turned dark in an instant. The officer's hand twitched, his face tightening with anger as he approached the veteran. Let me see some ID, he demanded. The veteran, though tired and frustrated, calmly complied reaching into his pocket, but the tension in the air was undeniable, and what should have ended peacefully was about to spiral into violence. The veteran handed over his ID, his movements slow and deliberate, wanting to avoid any misunderstandings. He knew how these encounters could go. He had seen them on the news far too often. His military training kicked in, reminding him to stay calm and controlled. The cop snatched the ID from his hand, his eyes narrowing as he glanced at it, but it was clear he wasn't interested in the details. The officer was looking for something, anything, to justify what he already wanted to do. What were you doing in that bar? The cop asked, his voice laced with suspicion. The question was unnecessary. There was nothing illegal about sitting in a bar, having a drink, and leaving quietly. But the veteran could sense the cop was baiting him, trying to provoke a reaction. Just having a drink, the veteran replied evenly his voice calm. He wasn't about to give this officer any reason to escalate, but deep down, he knew the cop had already made up his mind. The officer stepped closer, his body language growing more aggressive. You look like you've been up to something, he muttered, his hand still hovering near his holster. His tone was accusatory, filled with an unjustified hostility. The veteran held his ground, his eyes steady, refusing to be intimidated. He had faced far worse in combat, and he wasn't about to let this man rattle him. But the officer's growing frustration was evident. He didn't like the veteran's calm, composed demeanor. The tension between the two men was thick, the air crackling with unspoken hostility. A few onlookers had started to gather nearby, sensing that something was about to go wrong. The veteran glanced around, feeling the weight of their eyes on him. He didn't want to become another statistic, another victim of police brutality, but the situation was rapidly spiraling out of control. The cop stepped even closer, his eyes filled with anger. I know your type, he spat. Think you can do whatever you want, don't you? The veteran clenched his jaw but remained silent. There was no reasoning with this man. The cop's mind was clouded by prejudice, and there was nothing the veteran could say to de-escalate the situation. In the officer's eyes, he was guilty of something, anything, and that was all that mattered. The crowd grew larger, 
their murmurs filling the street as the officer's aggression reached a boiling point. As the crowd slowly grew, the tension between the veteran and the officer became unbearable. The veteran's calmness only seemed to fuel the officer's anger, as if his lack of fear was somehow an act of defiance. Answer me, the cop barked, his voice rising in pitch. The veteran exhaled, trying to keep himself composed. He had fought in wars, he had served his country with honor, and here he was, being treated like a criminal for simply existing. The cop, seeing the lack of reaction from the veteran, stepped forward and shoved him in the chest. It wasn't hard enough to knock him down, but it was enough to send a message. The crowd gasped, some even pulling out their phones to record what was happening. The veteran's eyes darkened, his fists clenching at his sides, but he didn't fight back. He knew that doing so would only make things worse. Still, the disrespect, the injustice of it all, burned inside him. One of the onlookers, a woman in her 30s, called out to the officer. Hey, leave him alone. He didn't do anything. Her voice was filled with concern, but it only seemed to aggravate the cop further. He shot her a look of pure rage. Stay out of this, he shouted, pointing at her menacingly. The crowd, though growing restless, hesitated. They knew how these situations could escalate, and no one wanted to become a target themselves. The veteran stood tall, staring straight into the officer's eyes. I don't want any trouble, he said softly, his voice calm but firm. Let's end this before it gets out of hand. But the cop's expression hardened. He didn't want to end it. He wanted to assert his authority, to show everyone who was in control. He had no idea who he was dealing with. A decorated war hero, a man who had sacrificed so much for his country. But it didn't matter. To the officer, this was about power. The air was thick with tension, the crowd holding their breath as the situation teetered on the edge of violence. The veteran knew there was no reasoning with the officer, but he hoped against hope that the presence of witnesses, the smartphones recording every move, might make the cop back down. Unfortunately, he was wrong. Without warning, the cop's fist flew through the air, striking the veteran across the jaw with a sickening thud. The crowd gasped in horror, their phones capturing every brutal moment. The force of the punch sent the veteran staggering backward, his hands instinctively going up to shield himself. The world seemed to slow down as the veteran stumbled, trying to stay on his feet, but the damage had been done. Blood trickled from his mouth and his vision blurred. The veteran's mind raced as he tried to make sense of what had just happened. He had done everything right, he had complied, he had stayed calm, and yet here he was on the receiving end of a violent attack. The cop stood over him, his face twisted in rage as if daring him to fight back. But the veteran didn't. He couldn't. The force of the blow had left him dazed, struggling to stay conscious. Somewhere in the crowd, a voice shouted, Call 911! The people watching were frozen in shock, unsure of how to react. The sight of the veteran, a man who had fought for his country, being assaulted by the very system he had sworn to protect, was too much for them to comprehend. The woman who had spoken out earlier was crying now, her hands trembling as she dialed her phone. The cop still standing over the veteran seemed unfazed by the crowd's reaction. In his mind, he had done nothing wrong. This was just another thug who had gotten what he deserved. He had no idea that the man he had just punched was a decorated veteran, a hero in his own right. The cop's arrogance was as dangerous as his fists, and he had no intention of backing down. As the veteran fell to his knees, the world around him began to fade. The pain was overwhelming, and his body was beginning to shut down. He could hear the crowd shouting, could feel the cold pavement beneath his hands, but it all felt distant, unreal. The last thing he saw before everything went black was the cop's face, filled with disdain. The veteran's body slumped to the ground, the life draining from him as his consciousness slipped away. His head hit the pavement with a sickening thud, and the crowd gasped once again. The phones recording the scene shook as people scrambled, unsure of what to do. One moment, he had been standing tall, a symbol of strength and resilience, and the next he was lying motionless on the street, his body crumpled like a discarded object. For a moment, everything seemed to freeze. The crowd, the cop, even the night itself seemed to hold its breath, waiting for something to happen. But the veteran didn't move. His chest barely rose, and his eyes were closed, as if he had been swallowed by the darkness.
The woman who had called 911 screamed for someone to help, but no one dared to approach. They were afraid, afraid of the cop, afraid of what they had just witnessed, afraid of the consequences. The officer stood over the veteran's limp body, his face expressionless. He hadn't expected the man to collapse like that. He had wanted to teach him a lesson, to assert his authority, but now things had gone too far. For the first time, a flicker of doubt crossed the officer's mind. He hadn't known who this man was, hadn't cared. But now, as the veteran lay unconscious at his feet, the gravity of the situation began to sink in. The crowd began to murmur, the tension growing as the reality of what had happened settled over them. This wasn't just a minor altercation. The man lying on the ground wasn't a criminal. He was someone who had served his country, someone who had fought for the freedoms that the officer was supposed to protect. And now he was fighting for his life. As the distant sound of sirens echoed through the night, the crowd knew that this wasn't over. The veteran's life hung in the balance, and the consequences of the cop's actions were about to ripple far beyond this quiet street. The sirens grew louder, cutting through the tense silence that had fallen over the street. The flashing red and blue lights of the ambulance illuminated the scene as paramedics rushed toward the unconscious veteran. The crowd watched in stunned silence as they surrounded his limp body, their voices low and urgent. The sight of a man, a veteran who had once served with pride and honor, now lying motionless on the cold pavement, filled the onlookers with a deep sense of sorrow and outrage. The cop who had stood over the fallen man moments before, now took a few steps back, his hands clenched into fists. He looked around nervously as the paramedics began to assess the veteran's condition, lifting him onto a stretcher with careful precision. The tension in the air was thick, and for the first time, the cop felt a sliver of fear creeping into his mind. He glanced at the phone still recording him, and a pit began to form in his stomach. The woman who had called 911 was crying now, her voice trembling as she spoke to the officers who arrived at the scene. He didn't do anything, she insisted, wiping tears from her cheeks. He was just minding his own business. That cop attacked him for no reason. Her words echoed through the crowd, and heads nodded in agreement. The witnesses knew what they had seen, and the phones capturing every detail would soon tell the world the same story. The paramedics moved quickly, strapping the veteran into the stretcher and rushing him into the waiting ambulance. His body remained still, his chest rising and falling ever so slightly, a faint sign of life. As the ambulance doors closed and the vehicle sped away, a deep sense of dread filled the air. No one knew if the veteran would survive. The punch that had knocked him unconscious could now leave him fighting for his life. The cop remained at the scene, his face unreadable. He hadn't expected the situation to spiral so far out of control. His arrogance had fueled the encounter, but now as the reality of what he had done sank in, the weight of his actions pressed down on him. The crowd, no longer silent, began to murmur angrily, their anger simmering just below the surface. The officer could feel their eyes on him and for the first time, he realized just how deeply he had messed up. Despite the unfolding chaos around him, the cop's arrogance hadn't completely faded. Even with the crowd growing hostile, their eyes filled with anger and disbelief, the officer stood tall, his jaw clenched tightly. In his mind, he was still in the right. He had acted on his instincts, and for him, that was all the justification he needed. He refused to admit, even to himself, that what he had done was wrong. The other officers on the scene exchanged uneasy glances, aware of the growing tension. They had arrived too late to witness the altercation, but they could feel the hostility radiating from the crowd. It was clear that something had gone horribly wrong, yet none of them dared to question the cop directly. In their eyes, he was one of their own, and loyalty within the force often ran deeper than the truth. The cop remained stone-faced, ignoring the questions thrown at him by the bystanders. He avoided the cameras, turning his back to them whenever someone got too close. But deep down, the nagging feeling that this might not go away began to take root. It was one thing to rough someone up and get away with it when no one was looking, but this time there were witnesses, lots of them. And the cameras weren't just recording, they were uploading live. Turn off the cameras, the cop barked at one of the onlookers, his frustration boiling over. But his command fell on deaf ears. The crowd had already lost what little respect they had for him, and now his anger only fueled their determination. They kept filming, determined to capture every moment of his arrogance for the world to see.
Despite his tough exterior, the cop could feel the walls closing in around him. His confidence, once unshakable, began to falter as the weight of what he had done pressed down on him. He glanced around nervously, knowing that things were spiraling out of his control, but refusing to show weakness. He had made his move, and now he would have to live with the consequences. The bystanders, many of whom had been going about their evening before witnessing the brutal encounter, stood in shock, their faces reflecting a mix of disbelief and outrage. What they had just seen was not only wrong, but horrifying. Some had expected the officer to calm down, to de-escalate the situation. But instead, they had watched helplessly as the situation had spiraled into violence, leaving the veteran in critical condition. A man in his 40s, standing near the front of the crowd, shook his head in disbelief. That was a soldier, he muttered to the person next to him, his voice thick with emotion. He served this country, and this is how he's treated? It's disgusting. His words echoed the feelings of many in the crowd their anger simmering just beneath the surface. The fact that the veteran had fought for their freedom only deepened the injustice of what had occurred. Some of the bystanders had begun to cry, overwhelmed by the brutality they had just witnessed. A young woman in her 20s wiped tears from her eyes as she spoke to one of the other onlookers. He didn't do anything wrong, she said, her voice shaky. He was just walking to his car, and that cop, he just hit him like that. She struggled to find the words to describe the horror of the moment, the shock still fresh in her mind. As the crowd continued to gather, murmurs of outrage rippled through the streets. People were angry, confused, and horrified by what they had seen. They had heard stories of police brutality before, but seeing it firsthand, witnessing a man being violently attacked for no reason, was something that cut deeper. The fact that the man was a veteran, someone who had risked his life for the country, made the incident even harder to swallow. Many of the bystanders remained frozen in place, unsure of what to do next. They had seen something terrible, but they didn't know how to help. The crowd looked to one another for answers, but none came. All they could do was wait, hoping that justice would somehow prevail. The 911 calls flooded in one after another. The first responders had already arrived, but the urgency of the situation pushed more people to reach for their phones, demanding accountability for what had just happened. Voices trembled on the line as witnesses described the unprovoked attack. There's a man, a veteran. He's been knocked out cold by a cop. He's in a coma and he needs help. One bystander frantically explained to the dispatcher. Yeah. The woman who had recorded most of the incident was still on the phone, pacing back and forth in the street as she relayed everything she had seen. The cop hit him, and he didn't even fight back, she said, her voice filled with anger. He's just lying there, not moving. You need to do something about this. Her fingers shook as she held her phone, but she refused to stop recording, knowing that every second was crucial. The crowd grew restless as they waited for something, anything to happen. People were shouting, demanding answers, demanding justice. Some were yelling at the officers who had arrived, while others were directing their anger toward the cop who had thrown the punch. You're gonna pay for this, someone shouted, their voice filled with rage. You think you can get away with this just because you wear a badge? Despite the chaos, a few people focused on making sure the veteran got the medical attention he needed. One man, a former medic, knelt on the ground where the veteran had fallen, doing his best to offer assistance while they waited for paramedics to arrive. His face was set with grim determination as he checked the veteran's pulse, praying that he would survive the brutal attack. The sense of urgency was palpable. The veteran's life was hanging in the balance, and everyone knew it. As more and more calls flooded in, it became clear that this was no longer just an isolated incident. It was a moment that would spark outrage far beyond the neighborhood, and soon the world would know what had happened here tonight. As the veteran lay in the hospital, fighting for his life, Stories of his past began to emerge. Those who knew him spoke of a man who had dedicated his life to serving his country, a man who had seen more than his fair share of hardship, but who had always carried himself with honor and dignity. He had enlisted in the military at a young age, driven by a deep sense of duty and a desire to protect those who couldn't protect themselves. He had served multiple tours overseas, facing the horrors of war head on. Despite the trauma he had endured, 
he had returned home determined to live a life of peace. His military record was impressive, numerous commendations and awards for bravery in combat. But more than that, he was known for his kindness, for the way he treated others with respect and compassion. His fellow soldiers had admired him, and his community had come to see him as a quiet, unassuming hero. But now that hero lay in a hospital bed, connected to machines that were keeping him alive. His family gathered around him, their faces etched with worry and fear. They had always known that his time in the military had left him with scars, both physical and emotional. But they had never imagined that the real danger would come from the very system he had fought to protect. The veteran's son, who had been away on business when the incident occurred, rushed to the hospital as soon as he heard the news. He stood at his father's bedside, his heart breaking at the sight of the man who had once been so strong, now reduced to a fragile state. He couldn't understand how this had happened, how someone who had given so much could be treated with such brutality. As the veteran's past became known, the outrage only grew. This was no ordinary man. This was a man who had risked his life for his country, only to be assaulted by those who were supposed to protect him. The community rallied behind him, demanding justice for the veteran who had given so much and received nothing but violence in return. The veteran's journey to the hospital was a race against time. The ambulance sped through the city streets, sirens blaring as paramedics worked frantically to stabilize him in the back. His condition was critical, his pulse weak, his breathing shallow. They administered oxygen trying to bring him back from the brink, but the severity of the trauma he had endured was evident. The blow to his head had caused massive internal damage, and every second counted. Inside the hospital, doctors and nurses were already preparing for his arrival. The emergency room buzzed with tension as they cleared space, readying their equipment for the life-or-death situation. The team of specialists stood by, waiting for the ambulance to pull up. For them, it was just another day in the ER, but they had no idea that the man they were about to treat was not just any patient. He was a veteran, a hero who had survived the horrors of war, only to be attacked on the streets of his own country. When the ambulance finally arrived, the paramedics rushed the stretcher inside, their voices quick and urgent as they briefed the medical team on his condition. Severe head trauma, loss of consciousness, Possible brain injury, one of them said, his voice tense. The doctors quickly took over, moving the veteran into the trauma room, where they began to assess the full extent of his injuries. The seriousness of the situation was undeniable. As the veteran was wheeled into surgery, his family arrived at the hospital, their faces pale with fear. His wife, a strong woman in her fifties, had tears streaming down her face as she clutched the arm of her son. His son, tall and muscular, stood beside her, his jaw clenched in anger and disbelief. They had been told what had happened, but hearing about it was one thing. Seeing the man they loved lying unconscious on a hospital bed was another. The waiting room was filled with a heavy silence as the family sat in tense anticipation. Every minute that passed felt like an eternity. They could only hope that the doctors would be able to save him, that their loved one would pull through this nightmare. But the damage was severe and they knew that the road to recovery, if he survived, would be long and painful. Hours passed, but for the family, time had all but stopped. The veteran's son paced the hospital corridor, unable to sit still. His mind raced, filled with a mix of fear, anger, and disbelief. How could this have happened? His father had survived war zones, had faced death on the battlefield, only to be attacked in his own neighborhood by someone who was supposed to protect him. The injustice of it all gnawed at his heart. Finally, a doctor appeared, walking toward the family with a solemn expression on his face. The veteran's wife stood up immediately, her hands trembling as she reached for her son's arm. The doctor's eyes met hers and she could see the weight of the news he was about to deliver. Her heart sank. How is he? She asked, her voice barely a whisper. The doctor took a deep breath. He's stable for now, he began, choosing his words carefully. But his condition is very serious. The blow to his head caused significant trauma. He's in a coma, and we don't know when, or if, he'll wake up. The words hung in the air like a lead weight, sinking deep into the hearts of the family. The mother gasped, her legs almost giving out as she collapsed into her chair. The son stood frozen, his hands clenched into fists at his sides. What does that mean? The son asked, his voice strained with emotion. What are his chances? 
The doctor hesitated, knowing that there were no easy answers. It's hard to say, he admitted. We're monitoring his brain activity closely. He could wake up in a few days, or it could be weeks. Months. In cases like these, it's unpredictable. The veteran's wife buried her face in her hands, her sobs muffled but raw with pain. Her son stood silently beside her, his face hardening with each passing second. He couldn't believe what he was hearing, couldn't believe that his father, the strongest man he knew, was now lying in a hospital bed, his life hanging by a thread. Anger surged through him, but there was nothing he could do but wait. As the doctor excused himself and returned to the trauma unit, the weight of the situation fully set in. The family was left with the horrifying reality that their loved one's fate was uncertain. All they could do was cling to the hope that he would fight his way back, just as he had done so many times before. The veteran's son, a man in his late twenties, was no stranger to strength and resilience. He had grown up idolizing his father, watching him overcome every challenge that life had thrown at him. As a child, he had listened wide-eyed to stories of his father's military service, tales of bravery and sacrifice that filled him with pride. His father had always been his hero, an unbreakable figure who had taught him what it meant to be a man, to be strong, to stand up for what was right. But now as he stood in the sterile, cold hallway of the hospital, he felt powerless. The sight of his father lying in that hospital bed, hooked up to machines, was almost too much to bear. His mind replayed the doctor's words over and over. In a coma, we don't know if he'll wake up, each time like a punch to the gut. The anger that simmered inside him was almost unbearable, but there was nothing he could do to change what had happened. What the cop didn't know, and what would soon come to light, was that the veteran's son wasn't just anyone. He was a man of influence, someone who had built a reputation as a fierce advocate for justice. He was a well-known civil rights attorney, a fighter for those who had been wronged by the system. And now that very system had come for his father. The irony of it all cut him deeply, but it also fueled his determination to make sure justice was served. As he stood at his father's bedside, watching the steady rise and fall of his chest, he made a silent vow. The cop who had done this would pay. He would use every resource at his disposal, every connection he had, to bring the officer to justice. His father had fought for his country, had given everything for the freedom of others, and now it was his turn to fight for him. The cop had no idea who he was up against. The son's mind raced with plans for the days ahead. He would begin by contacting the press, ensuring that this story would reach every corner of the nation. The world needed to know what had happened here, the injustice, the brutality, and the sheer disregard for human life. His father had survived war, but now he would survive this too, and the son would make sure that when he did, the man responsible would face the full force of the law. The veteran's son wasted no time. The moment he left the hospital, he was on the phone, reaching out to the people who could help him make his case public. He called reporters he had worked with in the past, civil rights organizations and community leaders, explaining the situation in detail. He knew that the only way to ensure accountability was to shine a light on the injustice that had been done. He needed the world to see what had happened to his father. Within hours, news of the attack began to spread. Local news stations picked up the story first, and soon it had gained national attention. The headlines were damning. Black veteran assaulted by police, now in coma. Hero of war brutally beaten by officer. The public was outraged. The thought of a man who had served his country being violently attacked by someone sworn to protect the public sent shockwaves through the nation. The sun wasn't finished, though. He knew that the media was just one part of the battle. The legal fight was just beginning. As a seasoned attorney, he began building the case against the officer. He contacted witnesses, collected statements, and secured the video footage that bystanders had recorded on their phones. Every piece of evidence would be crucial in holding the cop accountable for what he had done. As the days passed, the son's resolve only grew stronger. He had spent his entire career fighting for justice, but this case was personal in a way none of his previous cases had been. This was his father, a man who had always stood tall, who had taught him everything he knew about integrity and strength. 
He would not rest until the officer, who had nearly taken his father's life, was behind bars. The public rallied behind him. Protests began to form outside the police station, with signs reading, Justice for the Veteran and End Police Brutality. The community was outraged, and they stood in solidarity with the family. For the son, the support was heartening, but it was only the beginning. He knew that the real fight would take place in the courtroom, and he was prepared to do whatever it took to win. While the veteran's son was mobilizing his resources and gathering support, the officer responsible for the attack remained oblivious to the storm that was coming. In his mind, it was just another day on the job. He had dealt with situations like this before, men who didn't respect his authority, who thought they could challenge him. He had never faced any real consequences before, and he didn't expect this time to be any different. The officer had no idea who the veteran was, nor did he care. To him, the man was just another suspect, another person who hadn't shown him the respect he thought he deserved. His assumptions about the veteran had been reckless and fueled by prejudice. In his eyes, the veteran was no different than any other black man he had encountered on the street. Someone to be controlled, someone to be subdued. He hadn't bothered to ask questions, hadn't bothered to treat him with the dignity he deserved. What the cop didn't realize was that his actions had set off a chain of events that would change his life forever. He had assumed that the veteran was just another powerless victim, that no one would come to his defense. But he was wrong. The veteran wasn't just anyone. He was a man of honor, a man with a family who loved him, and a son who had the power to bring him to justice. As the story gained national attention, the officer's reckless assumptions began to unravel. His actions were being scrutinized by the media, by the public, and by his own department. The video footage of the attack had gone viral, and the public outrage was growing by the hour. The officer, once so confident in his authority, was now starting to feel the pressure. He had made a terrible mistake, and it was only a matter of time before he would be forced to face the consequences. The cop's arrogance had blinded him to the reality of the situation. He had thought he could act with impunity, that his badge would protect him from any repercussions. But now, with the world watching, he was beginning to realize just how wrong he had been. Within days, the story of the brutal attack had gone from local news to a nationwide media firestorm. Major networks picked up the footage of the veteran being punched by the police officer, and the horrifying images were played on screens across the country. Anchors discussed the details of the case, the veteran's decorated military service, and the reckless actions of the officer. Headlines blared across television and the internet. Veteran assaulted by racist cop, now in a coma. The video clips captured by bystanders began to circulate on social media, going viral within hours. Millions of people watched in shock and disbelief as the officer struck the veteran without provocation. The sight of the veteran collapsing to the ground, his body limp and unresponsive, drew an outpouring of anger and sadness from people across the world. Comment sections were flooded with messages of support for the veteran and outrage at the police officer's actions. The media coverage fueled the growing movement for justice. News outlets delved deeper into the veteran's background, revealing his impressive military record. Interviews with friends and fellow soldiers painted a picture of a man who had risked his life for his country and had returned home with honor, only to be treated like a criminal by those sworn to protect him. The contrast between the veteran's heroism and the officer's brutality struck a chord with the public, sparking protests and demands for accountability. As the story spread, politicians, celebrities, and activists began to weigh in, calling for immediate action. Civil rights organizations released statements condemning the officer's actions and calling for an investigation. High-profile figures used their platforms to amplify the story, urging their followers to stand in solidarity with the veteran and his family. The pressure on the police department grew with every passing day as calls for the officer's suspension and arrest echoed from every corner. The officer, who had assumed the situation would blow over, was now at the center of a national scandal. His name was plastered across the media, and the public demanded answers. What had started as a single act of unchecked aggression had now become a flashpoint for the entire country, and there was no going back. The small community where the incident had occurred was thrust into the national spotlight. What had once been a quiet, unremarkable neighborhood was now filled with protesters, 
news vans and activists, all calling for justice for the veteran. Signs reading justice for our hero and no more police brutality lined the streets and chants of Black Lives Matter echoed through the city. The atmosphere was electric, charged with both anger and hope. Local residents who had known the veteran for years were devastated by what had happened. He had been a beloved figure in the community, always willing to lend a helping hand, always treating everyone with respect. The fact that he had been treated with such brutality by the very people meant to protect him was an insult that cut deep. The community rallied around his family, offering their support in any way they could, organizing vigils, raising funds for his medical expenses, and demanding justice. Churches held special services, praying for the veterans' recovery and for justice to be served. Local leaders spoke out, condemning the officers' actions and calling for immediate reforms within the police department. The people who had once trusted their local law enforcement now felt betrayed, and they weren't going to stay silent. The community had been shaken, but they had come together in a powerful way. Protests began to grow larger, spilling out into the streets as people from neighboring towns joined in. What had started as a local incident had become a symbol of a much larger problem, systemic racism and police brutality. The people wanted change, and they were determined to fight for it. They marched through the streets, their voices loud and clear. No justice, no peace. As the protests continued, the pressure on the police department mounted. The community's voice had grown too loud to ignore, and now the department was facing a reckoning. They had no choice but to acknowledge the growing anger and fear that had gripped the town, and they knew that this was no longer something they could sweep under the rug. As the media and public demanded accountability, journalists began digging into the officer's past. What they uncovered only added fuel to the fire. The cop, who had once seemed like just another officer on the beat, had a dark history, one that the department had managed to keep quiet for years. He had been involved in several incidents of excessive force, each one swept under the rug or dismissed with a slap on the wrist. The revelations were shocking, but for many they weren't surprising. The officer had a pattern of targeting black men, using excessive force during routine stops and escalating situations unnecessarily. Complaints had been filed against him, but none had led to any significant consequences. The department had protected him, brushing off the accusations as misunderstandings or justified use of force. But now with the eyes of the nation watching, those past actions were coming back to haunt him. News outlets published exposés detailing the officer's past misconduct, interviewing victims who had crossed paths with him before. The stories painted a damning picture of a man who had used his badge as a weapon, abusing his power to intimidate and harm those he viewed as beneath him, the public outrage only grew as more details came to light, and the calls for his arrest became deafening. The department, once confident that they could weather the storm, found themselves in a precarious position. They had ignored the warning signs for too long, and now they were facing the consequences of their inaction. The officer's history was too damning to ignore, and the public was demanding justice not only for the veteran, but for all the victims the officer had wronged over the years. As the revelations continued to pour in, the officer's reputation crumbled. His name became synonymous with corruption and brutality, and there was no escaping the public's wrath. What had once been hidden was now out in the open, and the department was left scrambling to contain the fallout. As the legal battle began to take shape and the public outcry grew, the veterans' family found solace in the overwhelming support from friends, neighbors, and even strangers who had been moved by his story. The hospital waiting room was often filled with people who had come to offer their prayers, their well wishes, and their unwavering support for a man they saw as a hero. The outpouring of love and solidarity helped ease the heavy burden of uncertainty they were carrying. The veteran's wife, though shaken by the ordeal, remained strong for her husband. She had always admired his strength, his resilience, and his quiet sense of duty. Now it was her turn to be strong for him. Her days were spent at his bedside, holding his hand, speaking softly to him, hoping that her voice would reach him through the fog of the coma. She refused to give up hope, even when the doctor spoke in cautious tones about his chances of recovery. The veteran's son, too, found strength in the support of those around him. His friends and colleagues, many of whom had worked alongside him in his legal career, 
offered their resources and expertise to help him in his fight for justice. Civil rights lawyers reached out, offering their support in building the case against the officer. The family had a powerful network behind them, and they were determined to see this through to the end. The veteran's old military friends, some of whom hadn't seen him in years, also began to reach out. They spoke of his bravery, his leadership, and the way he had always looked out for those under his command. They couldn't believe that a man who had survived the horrors of war had been nearly killed by the very people he had fought to protect. Their outrage mirrored that of the public, and they made it clear that they stood with the family in their quest for justice. The love and support from the community gave the family the strength they needed to keep fighting. They knew that they weren't alone, and that knowledge was powerful. The battle for justice wasn't just theirs. It belonged to everyone who had ever been wronged by a corrupt system, and together, they were stronger than ever. One evening, as the sun set over the city, hundreds of people gathered outside the hospital for a silent vigil in honor of the veteran. The crowd, holding candles that flickered in the cool night air, stood in solidarity with the family. They had come to show their support, to let the veteran and his loved ones know that they weren't alone in this fight. The sight was both beautiful and heartbreaking, a testament to the strength of a community united by a shared sense of justice. The veteran's wife stood at the front of the crowd, her face illuminated by the soft glow of the candles. Her heart was heavy with both fear and hope as she looked out over the sea of faces. Some she recognized, neighbors, friends, people from church, while others were strangers who had been moved by her husband's story. It was overwhelming to see so many people come together, all for him. The veteran's son stood beside her, his hand resting on her shoulder as they both watched the crowd. He had been in countless legal battles, had fought for justice in cases where the odds had seemed insurmountable. But this was different. This wasn't just about the law, it was about people, about the lives that were affected by injustice every day. The vigil was a reminder that they weren't just fighting for his father, but for everyone who had been wronged by a broken system. As the crowd fell silent, the only sounds were the faint flickers of the candles and the soft murmurs of people offering prayers for the veteran's recovery. The air was thick with emotion, a quiet but powerful show of solidarity. The people had come not to protest, but to bear witness to the injustice that had occurred and to remind the family that they would not stand alone. The vigil lasted for hours, with people staying long after the sun had fully set. As the night deepened, the crowd slowly began to disperse, leaving behind a powerful sense of unity. The candles still flickered in the dark, a symbol of hope that, despite everything, justice would be served. As the legal fight and media frenzy continued, more details about the veterans' distinguished military career began to surface, adding even more weight to the story. His military records were impressive, filled with commendations for bravery, leadership, and service in some of the most dangerous conflict zones around the world. He had served in multiple tours in Iraq and Afghanistan, rising through the ranks as a leader admired by his fellow soldiers for his unwavering commitment to his duty and his men. News outlets highlighted his achievements, showing pictures of him in uniform, medals pinned to his chest, he had received honors for acts of heroism under fire, including saving the lives of fellow soldiers during an ambush. The image of him as a decorated war hero contrasted sharply with the brutal way he had been treated by the police officer. The public couldn't reconcile how someone who had given so much could be treated with such cruelty and disrespect. Interviews with fellow veterans, many of whom had served alongside him, painted a picture of a man who had dedicated his life to protecting others. They spoke of his quiet leadership, his ability to remain calm under pressure, and his deep sense of duty. He was always the first one to volunteer for the hardest missions, one of his old comrades said in an interview. He would never leave anyone behind. He's a hero. The more the public learned about his service, the angrier they became. This wasn't just any man who had been assaulted. This was a hero someone who had put his life on the line for his country time and time again. The fact that he was now lying in a hospital bed, fighting for his life because of a senseless act of police violence, made the injustice all the more unbearable. His family, though devastated by his condition, took comfort in the fact that his story was being told. They knew that he had never sought recognition for his service. He had always been humble about his accomplishments.
But now, as the world learned more about the man behind the headlines, they felt a sense of pride. He was more than a victim. He was a hero who had been wronged, and now justice had to be served. With the pressure from the media, the public, and the veteran's son, the investigation into the incident was taken to new heights. The police department, which had initially tried to downplay the situation, was now forced to launch a full-scale inquiry. Internal affairs officers were brought in to review the footage, interview witnesses, and take statements from the bystanders who had captured the brutal attack on their phones. The video evidence was damning, showing the officer's unprovoked aggression and the unnecessary violence that had left the veteran in a coma. There was no justification for what had happened, and as the investigation deepened, it became clear that the department had no choice but to take action. The officer was placed on administrative leave, but that wasn't enough to quell the growing outrage from the public, who demanded his immediate arrest. The investigation also began to uncover the officer's long history of complaints and accusations of excessive force. Each new revelation painted an even darker picture of a man who had abused his power time and time again, shielded by the department's unwillingness to hold him accountable. The veteran's son, now leading the legal charge, made sure that every detail of the officer's misconduct was brought to light. Pressure mounted as civil rights organizations got involved, pushing for transparency and demanding that the officer face criminal charges. Protests outside the police station grew louder, with signs reading, Justice for our hero, and no more excuses. The people wanted answers, and they wanted the officer to be held accountable, not just for this incident, but for every life he had harmed during his years on the force. The department, realizing the severity of the situation, cooperated fully with the investigation, knowing that they couldn't afford to protect the officer any longer. The evidence against him was overwhelming, and now they were bracing for what was sure to be one of the most high-profile legal battles in the country. As the investigation intensified and the walls began closing in, the officer who had assaulted the veteran started to feel the full weight of what he had done. At first, he had believed that the situation would blow over, that the department would cover for him like they had in the past. But this time was different. The eyes of the nation were on him, and no amount of departmental loyalty could shield him from the consequences of his actions. He started to feel the pressure everywhere he went. The media had camped outside his house, reporters asking him to comment on the assault, neighbors whispering behind his back. People he had once known as friends distanced themselves from him, not wanting to be associated with someone at the center of such a scandal. He began receiving threatening messages and phone calls, his reputation crumbling around him. The cop's arrogance, which had once been his armor, was now cracking under the weight of the public's outrage. He had made reckless assumptions that night, assumptions that had led to the senseless attack on a man he hadn't even bothered to know. And now, as the truth about the veteran's life and service became public, the officer realized just how badly he had miscalculated. His fear grew as the legal case against him took shape. He had always believed that his badge would protect him, that no one would question his actions. But with the veteran's son leading the charge and with the public demanding justice, the officer knew that his time was running out. His worst fear was no longer losing his job. It was going to prison for what he had done. As the investigation closed in, the officer began to realize that there was no escaping the consequences. He had made a fatal mistake, one that had not only ended his career, but might also end his freedom. And as the days passed, that fear gnawed at him, leaving him sleepless and isolated, awaiting the inevitable reckoning. While the cop was consumed by fear, the veteran's son was gaining momentum in his quest for justice. What the officer had never known, and what was now becoming clear, was that the son wasn't just another grieving family member, he was a powerful force in the legal world. As a prominent civil rights attorney, the veteran's son had connections, influence, and the skill to dismantle the officer's defense piece by piece. The son had spent years fighting for justice in cases of police brutality, discrimination, and civil rights violations. He had built a reputation as a fierce advocate, someone who didn't back down when faced with adversity. His father had always been his inspiration, a man who had taught him the values of honor, courage, and standing up for what was right. Now he was channeling everything he had learned from his father into this fight. As the son's influence became more apparent, 
The legal team representing the officer began to realize that they were up against something far greater than they had anticipated. The son wasn't just any lawyer, he was someone with the power to shape the narrative, to bring the full weight of public opinion down on their client. The officer's defense team scrambled to prepare, knowing that they were facing an uphill battle. The son's influence extended beyond the courtroom. He worked closely with the media, ensuring that his father's story remained front and center in the national conversation. He made appearances on news shows, giving interviews that highlighted the brutality of the attack and the need for systemic change in policing. The public, already outraged, rallied even further behind him, seeing him as a beacon of hope in the fight for justice. As the days went on, the son's resolve only grew stronger. He knew that his father would want him to fight not just for their family, but for every family who had been affected by police violence. He wasn't just seeking justice for his father. He was seeking justice for all those who had been wronged by a system that had protected men like the officer for far too long. The public outcry surrounding the case had reached a fever pitch. Protests erupted in cities across the country, with people demanding not just justice for the veteran, but an end to police brutality and systemic racism. The streets were filled with people holding signs, chanting, and marching in solidarity with the veteran's family. It was no longer just about one man. It had become a movement, a call for change that resonated with millions of people. Social media was ablaze with support for the veteran. Hashtags like a Kedua justice for our hero and our can end police brutality trended for weeks with people from all walks of life joining the conversation. Celebrities, politicians, and activists used their platforms to amplify the story, calling for immediate action. The video of the assault had been seen by millions, and each time it was shared, the anger and outrage only grew. The public's demand for accountability was impossible to ignore. The protests outside the police department, once small and scattered, had swelled into massive gatherings, with thousands of people chanting for the officer's arrest. The department, under immense pressure, had no choice but to take action. They announced that the officer would face criminal charges for the assault, a move that was met with cheers from the crowds. The power of public outcry had forced the system to act. What had once seemed like an isolated incident had now become a symbol of a much larger issue, one that had plagued communities for far too long. The people weren't just demanding justice for the veteran, they were demanding a complete overhaul of the system that had allowed this kind of brutality to continue unchecked. As the public continued to rally behind the veteran and his family, the legal battle intensified. The officer's defense team tried to push back, but they were fighting an uphill battle. The power of public opinion, combined with the overwhelming evidence against the officer, made it clear that justice was on the side of the veteran's family. And as the trial date approached, the world waited to see what would happen next. The courtroom was packed as the trial began, with media outlets, activists, and supporters of the veteran and his family filling every available seat. Outside, crowds gathered, holding signs demanding justice for the veteran. The world was watching, and the stakes were high. This wasn't just a case about one man. It had become a symbol of a larger fight for justice against police brutality and racial injustice. The veteran's son, leading the prosecution with a team of highly skilled attorneys, was prepared for the battle ahead. Every piece of evidence had been meticulously gathered and presented. The video footage of the assault, the testimonies from witnesses, and the officer's long history of excessive force. The case was clear, and the prosecution was determined to hold the officer accountable for his actions. The defense team, realizing the overwhelming evidence against their client, tried to argue that the officer had acted out of fear for his safety, claiming that the veteran had been uncooperative. But the video evidence told a different story. The footage showed the veteran remaining calm, complying with the officer's commands and then being attacked without provocation. The defense's argument quickly crumbled under the weight of the truth. As the trial progressed, more damning details about the officer's past surfaced. Former colleagues testified about his aggressive behavior, and several victims of his previous use of force came forward to share their stories. Each testimony painted a picture of a man who had abused his power for years, protected by a system that had allowed him to continue his career unchecked. The veteran's son delivered a powerful closing argument, his voice steady but filled with emotion. This isn't just about my father, he said, looking directly at the jury.
This is about all the people who have suffered at the hands of a broken system. It's about ensuring that no one else has to go through what my father did. It's about justice for him and for every victim of police violence. The courtroom fell silent as the jury deliberated. The world held its breath, waiting for the verdict. And throughout the trial, the veteran's family remained strong. His wife and son were a constant presence in the courtroom, their faces filled with quiet determination. They had been through so much, waiting by the veteran's bedside, watching him fight for his life, and now standing before the world, demanding justice for the man they loved. His wife, though visibly weary from the weeks of hospital visits and the emotional toll of the trial, never faltered in her support. She had always been the pillar of strength for their family, and now in their darkest hour, she remained steadfast. Her love for her husband, the man she had watched go off to war and come back to build a life with her, gave her the resilience to endure the grueling days in court. The veteran's son, too, stood tall. He had fought for justice his entire career, but this was personal. His father had always been his hero, the man who had taught him right from wrong, and now he was fighting to honor his father's legacy. Every day he stood in the courtroom, a symbol of the family's strength, refusing to let the officer's actions go unpunished. Outside the courtroom, the family found comfort in the overwhelming support from the public. The crowds that gathered daily, chanting for justice and holding up signs of support, reminded them that they weren't alone in this fight. People from all walks of life had come together to stand with them, to demand accountability and change. The strength of the community fueled their own, giving them the courage to keep fighting. Despite the emotional toll, the family remained united. They knew that whatever the outcome of the trial, they had done everything in their power to seek justice. They had turned their pain into action, and their strength had inspired countless others to join the fight for justice and equality. And I'm the day the verdict was announced, the world held its breath. The jury had deliberated for hours, carefully weighing the evidence and the testimonies they had heard over the course of the trial. When the jury finally returned to the courtroom, the tension was palpable. The officer, once so confident in his power and authority, sat at the defense table, his face pale with fear. He knew what was coming. As the foreman stood and read the verdict aloud, guilty on all counts, the courtroom erupted in emotion. The officer's fate was sealed. He would face the full consequences of his actions, finally held accountable for the brutality he had inflicted on the veteran. The weight of the verdict sent shockwaves through the room and the public outside celebrated, their chants of justice for our hero ringing through the streets. Beer, the judge acknowledging the gravity of the crime and the years of misconduct that had come to light during the trial handed down a lengthy prison sentence. The officer's badge and uniform, once symbols of authority and protection, had become symbols of betrayal and violence. Now, stripped of his power, he would pay the price for his action. The veteran's son, standing beside his mother, watched the officer as he was led away in handcuffs. It was a moment of bittersweet relief. Justice had been served, but the damage that had been done to their family would never fully heal. His father's life had been irrevocably changed, and no amount of legal punishment could erase the pain they had endured. But the officer was going to prison, and that, at least, was a victory for the family and for everyone who had fought alongside them. Outside the courtroom, the crowds erupted in cheers. The people had demanded justice, and they had won. The verdict wasn't just a victory for the veterans' family. It was a victory for every family that had ever been wronged by police violence, a symbol of hope in the long fight for accountability and change. As the legal battle drew to a close and the officer was sent to prison, the veterans' family received the news they had been praying for. After months in a coma, the veteran began to show signs of improvement. Slowly but surely, his eyes fluttered open, and the machines that had been keeping him alive began to show more stable readings. It was a moment of hope, one that the family had feared might never come. His wife was at his bedside when he first woke up. She had spent nearly every day at the hospital, speaking softly to him, holding his hand, and reminding him of how much he was loved. When his eyes finally opened, her heart swelled with joy and relief. Tears streamed down her face as she whispered, you're going to be okay. You're here with us. The veteran's recovery was slow, 
but the fact that he had survived was a miracle in itself. Doctors had warned the family that his injuries were severe and that his brain might never fully recover. But the veteran was a fighter, just as he had always been. He had survived wars, battles, and now this. His body, though weakened by the trauma, was beginning to heal. As the days passed, the veteran became more alert, able to speak and recognize his family. His wife, his son, and his friends were by his side, offering their love and support every step of the way. Though there was still a long road ahead in terms of his physical and mental recovery, the fact that he had come out of the coma was a testament to his strength and will to live. The family's joy was overwhelming. They had been through so much, but now, with the veteran awake and recovering, there was finally a light at the end of the tunnel. He had survived, and though the scars of the assault would remain, both physical and emotional, he would have the chance to rebuild his life with the people who loved him most. In the months that followed, the veteran continued to make progress in his recovery. His strength slowly returned, and though he had a long way to go, the fact that he was alive and with his family was all that mattered. The community, which had rallied around him and his family during the trial, continued to offer their support. The love and solidarity they had shown never wavered, and it gave the veteran and his family the strength to move forward. The veteran's son, who had fought so tirelessly for justice, felt a deep sense of pride. His father had survived, and the officer who had nearly taken his life was behind bars. It wasn't just about revenge. It was about holding the system accountable about showing the world that justice could be served, even in the face of overwhelming adversity. He knew that there was still work to be done, that the fight for justice and equality was far from over. But for now, he could take solace in the victory they had won. The veteran, though still recovering, began to take part in the movement that had sprung up in his name. He met with activists, spoke at rallies, and became a symbol of resilience in the fight against police brutality. His story, once a tragedy, had become a beacon of hope for others who had suffered at the hands of a broken system. He used his platform to advocate for change, to ensure that what had happened to him would never happen to anyone else. Justice had been served, but more than that, the veteran had survived. He had faced violence and hatred, but he had come out the other side stronger than ever. His family, his community, and the nation had stood by him, and together they had forced the system to reckon with its own failures. It was a victory that would resonate for years to come. As the veteran and his family looked toward the future, they knew that their fight had made a difference. They had turned their pain into action, and their strength had changed the course of history. Justice had been served, and now they could finally begin to heal.